Good morning, everyone. Your morning weather briefing for this Monday, July 9th. Uh, no major changes in the forecast versus what I presented yesterday, although again, note that overall my forecast right now is trending somewhat cooler and somewhat wetter in the Corn Belt versus what I presented from back on Friday. Looking at today's temperature and rainfall outlooks, you can see that there is still a fair amount of heat uh, that is going to be seen in a big portion of the Corn Belt for at least another week, and that heat is going to be uh, pretty slow to move out of uh, southeastern portion of the Corn Belt, but we are looking at the heat to eventually break all across the, the middle and eastern portions of the country uh, for next week. I uh, certainly can see that my 6 to 10 day rainfall forecast continues to be a good deal wetter than what I presented from back on Friday, and even my 11 to 15 day rainfall forecast today has trended a little bit wetter than what I presented even yesterday. QPF discussion for the one to five day time frame. I do not have major disagreements versus what is shown in this forecast. I think that this uh, map would be uh, most indicative of what the GFS ensemble is showing with regards to its rainfall forecast this morning. Uh, most of the rainfall in question is going to be falling late in this period, so plenty of time for this map to be adjusted. Overall, I would think that rainfall coverage would be less than this map shows in the Corn Belt, but probably some localized rainfall amounts heavier than the map shows in especially the northwestern Corn Belt. For the day 6 to 10, 7 time frame, again, like yesterday, this is a, a blend of a wetter GFS forecast and a drier European model forecast. In the end, look for rainfall amounts to be uh, bigger than shown, rainfall coverage probably being a little bit less than the map would indicate. High temperatures yesterday, still relatively mild temperatures all across the Corn Belt to mid-south and southeast with the vast majority of that area seeing high temperatures yesterday staying below the 90 degree mark. Uh, not a bad morning uh, in the Corn Belt with regards to overnight lows, although you can see that portions of the northwestern Corn Belt as of 5 o'clock this morning uh, did still see temperatures above the 70 degree mark and that was also the case in far southern portions of the Corn Belt as well. 18 hour rainfall totals not a whole lot during the last 24 hours in the middle of the country it did see some strong and severe thunderstorms develop uh, during the late afternoon and overnight hours in portions of the northern plains and you can see that on the radar estimated rainfall this is covering the past three days uh, you can see that rainfall activity that did occur in the northern plains with some of that activity uh, getting into the far northwestern corn belt overnight and you can see that on the radar this morning uh, with a small area of showers and thunder showers right now located across the southern portion of Minnesota. Look for that activity to die out pretty quickly during the morning hours today. As far as the forecast is concerned, still looking at very limited rainfall all across the Corn Belt for today. Uh, through the daytime hours on Wednesday, you can see that the models in general are in good agreement on a virtual lack of rainfall during the period across the Corn Belt. Uh, really anything that is seen beyond the rainfall activity that is occurring right now on the radar in southern Minnesota, it's going to be just in the far southern and far southeastern portions of the Corn Belt where there may be some isolated rain showers uh, during the afternoon hours for today and also for tomorrow. But other than what I've just mentioned, it is a dry forecast through at least Wednesday all across the Corn Belt. Uh, the reason for that, well, you can blame it on a big dome of high pressure that is located aloft, looking at 500 millibar uh, features as of 7 o'clock tomorrow from the European model. You can see that a dome of high pressure uh, really dominating the landscape, especially across the western Corn Belt and areas to the west of there. Uh, any northwesterly flow aloft staying generally uh, well to the northeast of the Corn Belt. So there's your big reason why we are in a limited rainfall pattern for at least the next two to three days. As we get towards Thursday morning, though, we will be starting to see some rainfall activity. Uh, moving back into the northwestern Corn Belt, you can see that the frontal boundary at that time is going to be starting to kick off some shower and thunderstorm activity for late Wednesday night, Wednesday night across far northwestern portions of the Corn Belt, and that is going to be starting us into a time frame in which there is likely going to be some rain falling somewhere in the Corn Belt on a daily basis for Thursday, Friday, and throughout the 6-10 to 10 day time frame, which today takes us out through uh, July 22nd. Uh, just looking at one snapshot during that time frame. This is uh, looking at surface features as of 7 o'clock in the morning uh, on July uh, 17th. Uh, you can see that uh, all of the models are suggesting rainfall at that time, but certainly some different looks on it. Uh, European models still have the rainfall into the far northwestern Corn Belt, while the GFS model has driven a cool front uh, well th uh, to the Corn Belt uh, by that time, and pushing all of the rainfall just in far southern portions of the region. A Canadian model would be uh, somewhere in between, and the European ensemble would generally speaking, uh, be more like the uh, uh, European operational model. So uh, a lot of details to be worked out, but a situation
situation where I do believe that once the raids start to be moving back into the far northwestern Corn Belt by late in this coming Wednesday night, we will start to see a period that will last through the 6 to 10 day time frame in which there will be some rain falling somewhere in the Corn Belt on a daily basis. I look for rainfall on most any of those days to be a significant in some portion of the Corn Belt and maybe even locally heavy in some portions of the Corn Belt as well. A little bit difficult to determine exactly the timing of the rainfall, the exact amounts, and exactly where the biggest amounts would fall. My guess right now is that your bigger rainfall is going to be occurring mainly in the northwestern portion of the Corn Belt across a good portion of eastern South Dakota, a big portion of Nebraska, a big portion of Iowa, a big portion of Wisconsin, and especially into Minnesota. Your most limited rainfall totals through the end of the 10-day time frame probably occurring in Kansas and Missouri. With regards to the temperature forecast, uh, above normal temperatures are going to be returning to a big portion of the Corn Belt for this Monday, and that uh, widespread above normal temperatures are going to be continuing through at least Saturday of this week. Uh, looking at temperature anomalies for Saturday, which will probably be the warmest day overall uh, during the time frame in question, you can see extensive area of temperatures running quite easily above normal all across the nation's midsection. Uh, looking at your high temperature forecast for that day, you can see an extensive area of 90 degree high temperatures in the uh, middle of the country at that time. Already we're going to be seeing return to some 90 plus degree temperatures in a large portion of the Corn Belt for this Monday and that will be occurring across a big portion of the Corn Belt right through uh, the end of this week. Plenty of 88 to 95 degree highs during that period. As far as any extreme 95 plus degree heat, you can see on the European model there that for Saturday is suggesting a big area of 100 plus degree heat. I do think that that's somewhat extreme but overall I do think that we're going to be seeing bigger heat uh, in this upcoming time frame of above normal temperatures uh, versus what we have seen earlier on this summer. Uh, still, the landscape is going to be quite green across the Corn Belt, so I do not think that we're going to be seeing widespread 95 plus degree heat. But the Corn Belt is also drying out right now, and no more is that the case than in Kansas and Missouri. So I think that in especially Missouri and nearby areas, we can see several days uh, coming up in which 95 plus degree highs can be seen in that area. A low temperature forecast being very, uh, very warm, low temperature is going to be a factor ahead as well. Uh, looking at your low temperature forecast for Sunday morning, probably going to be the warmest morning coming up. You can see that an extensive area of 70 plus degree low is going to be seen at that time. Uh, some areas not even getting below the 80 degree mark. So uh, a number of mornings coming up in which low temperatures above the 70 degree mark will not be uncommon across the Corn Belt. Uh, some days when uh, the morning lows are widespread above 70 and certainly some places struggling to get below the 80 degree mark. As I said, the heat is going to be breaking next week, but it is going to be slow to be breaking in southeastern portions of the region. Uh, looking at your temperature anomalies for July 16th or for a week from today, you can see that much cooler weather has moved into the northwestern and western Corn Belt by that time. Uh, even some much below normal readings at that time across a portion of the western and northwestern Corn Belt. A note though that southeastern section of the Corn Belt seal still seeing temperatures running above or even much above normal that day. So in those southeastern areas, uh, the cool down is going to be slow to arrive, probably not arriving until as late as July 18th or July 19th. Another thing about that map, you can see that quite a temperature contrast is going to be seen across the Corn Belt by that time, something that should also be enhancing rainfall chances across the Corn Belt, especially as we get towards the first portion of next week. Uh, there you can see the break in the heat wave as we get towards next week. By the time we get to uh, Thursday, July 19th, normal to below normal temperatures have encompassed all of the Corn Belt by that time. So it, the heat will break, but especially for southeastern portions of the Corn Belt, it may not break until very late in the 10-day time frame. Looking at 500 millibars for the 11 to 15-day time frame for the early portion of the period, you can see that the dome of high pressure has taken up its normal residence in southwestern portion of the nation uh, over the Four Corners region. By that time, northwesterly flow in the Corn Belt should be keeping rainfall chances in the forecast at that time for late in the 11 to 15-day period. For late in the day on July 23rd, you can see that the dome of high pressure still in its normal summertime residence over southwestern portion of the nation. Northwesterly flow aloft in the Corn Belt should be keeping rainfall chances alive at that time as well. 
Internationally, looking at Europe, still some very nice rains in the forecast over the next 10 days for Poland and areas to the south of there. Those rains would be extremely beneficial in Poland where it has been dry and not so much in southeastern portion of Europe where the rainfall situation has been quite wet in recent weeks. A note that the forecast remains quite dry in Germany, France, and England. No more than normal rainfall there during the next uh, uh, 10 days to two weeks. A rainfall badly needed right now in a big portion of Germany and especially England, and it is certainly drying out as well in France. Look for mostly above normal temperatures in Europe for the next two weeks. Rainfall forecast for the former Soviet Union summer grain areas looking at near normal rainfall there for the next two weeks. Note that the bulk of that rainfall, though, in the 6 to 10 and 11 to 15 day period, those dry eastern summer row crop areas of the former Soviet Union still seeing minimal rains through Friday and quite a bit of 90 plus degree heat, especially in southern district for the next five to six days as well. For the spring grain areas of the former Soviet Union, a distinctive west to east bias in rainfall. Look for some very nice rains over the next 10 days in western growing areas, very limited rainfall in the east. Corn and soybean areas of China, wonderful rains coming up over the next two weeks for the corn and soybean areas of Manchuria. That rainfall evenly divided throughout the two-week time frame. Uh, going to be drying out the North China Plain. The bulk of the rain that is shown there going to be occurring during the next two to three days. In Canada, fairly nice rainfall forecast coming up for Canada. No more is that the case as you, than as you get into northern and northeastern portion of the growing area. More limited rainfall totals for far southern and far western portion of the growing area. A very dry two week forecast for Australia. Below normal rainfall going to be widespread. Most of the main wheat growing areas seeing nothing in the way of rainfall for the next 10 days. Finishing up with this morning in India, the monsoon looks very good for a lot of the key groundnut and oilseed areas in the north, especially in Gujarat, southern Rajasthan, northern Maharashtra, and a good portion of Madhya Pradesh. That's what I have for your Monday. Everyone have themselves a great day.